I have owned my all new 2023 Chevy Colorado Trail Boss for about five months and nearly 6,000 miles. So I wanted to share with you my ownership experience, the good, the bad, and the ugly, because I've done pretty much everything possible with this truck. I went off-road, I've towed heavy trailers, I went drag racing, I took a road trip to New Mexico from Colorado. All that is coming up right now. This is a pickup truck, so the powertrain is very, very important. And I can happily report to you guys that I've had zero problems with the powertrain, including this 2.7 liter turbocharged engine. It's a little dusty, I apologize. And the eight-speed automatic. The eight-speed previously has had some uh, less than stellar reputation on reliability, but this one has been working perfectly, even after drag racing and towing. I had my oil changed at about 5,000 miles. And I'm, this, I paid for this, this is not a sponsorship, uh, using Blackstone Laboratories. And they said this is pretty normal. All of the numbers, if you go down the line, look well within limits, especially like fuel content is less than 0.5%, TBN total base number, um, and additives that is 4.7, it has to be above one. So this engine is really healthy. According to this lab report, it was brand new. So some, some of the initial lubricants uh, were in the oil. But, so how about this? Let me show you the drag race because there's 310 horsepower and about 390 pound-feet of torque from this mid-grade powertrain that I bought in my Trail Boss. So let me show you the drag race against the GMC Canyon right now to show you exactly how it accelerates. Three, two, one, go! Come on! Oh, it's close! Yes! Bye-bye, <laughs> Andre. Maybe Roman fell asleep in the... What? And there goes the torque advantage. Oh, oh yeah. How is he pulling away? And... All right, Andre, how'd you go? Well, I did 17.06 at 85 miles per hour. I went 16.22 at 87.9 miles an hour. All right, so as you saw there, this Colorado did not beat the GMC in that race, but I've mostly used premium fuel. So in Colorado, that means 91 octane because of our higher elevations. And I've been super happy. I was going home last night in this truck and I accelerated from a light, chirped my tires. This truck is pretty fun to drive, even if it's not a high output trim. But let's talk about towing. That's very important to me because I have a boat and I'm the managing editor of TFL Truck, and we do the Ike Gauntlet, the world's toughest towing test. So let me show you the Ike Gauntlet, where we towed a fairly heavy trailer with this exact truck. So let's go to the Ike now. And now we're gonna run out we're of uh, run runway. Out of runway, yes. And you know... So let's register our time. 7.06 is when you first told me to look at it. Um, and 3.6 MPG. Yeah. So we have to cut this about what? Like, uh, half a mile short yeah we're not we're not that far from the end of it but yeah that's too bad because we don't this doesn't happen to us too often but you know one of the reasons i think this is doing so well is because of all that torque like a lot of yeah, gases low, just don't low have end, torque this has got torque. some pretty low end torque yeah. and at 390 pound feet of torque i think that's the secret sauce to making this run the way you want it to this is good i mean i, I think it's great for a four cylinder to do this um, I think it was it would have done this run in about eight minutes. Yeah, it would have. Because I, I was so. staying, you know, I slowed down a little bit because of that uh, gust of wind. But then we regained power, regained speed, so we were going at speed limit. Right. And we're, so, yeah, I agree. And 3.6 when we were moving, that was our efficiency. Right. And we did record this on the Banks iDash Data Monster. Okay. But we currently on the iDash, we do not have access to transmission data right now okay. at this moment so 
Um, that's coming soon. Well, you know, maybe, maybe this will save your transmission because we never got extremely hot. We got it up there to the edge. So you would have thought towing that heavy trailer on the Ike is not possible or doable with a midsize pickup, but it was, it was okay. Now I want to show you a couple of other things. So I've saved a few trailers here, but primarily it's all about my boat, right? Because that's what I do with my family. So here's my Taiga 22V. I have towed it about, over the last couple of months, about 500 miles and 10.58 MPG specifically with this trailer. This trailer weighs about 6,000 pounds, plus I have my family in the truck and all our camping gear, so fully loaded. So this is not good, in my opinion. I mean, it's okay to be over 10 MPG towing, but considering that this has about a 21 gallon tank and you never use all 21 gallons, your towing range becomes about 200 miles or less which is not really great range. So that's the bad part of this pickup truck and towing. Um, if you're towing more often, for example, I'm towing about 10% of the time I use this truck. If you're towing about 20% of your truck life or 30 or 40%, I would recommend getting maybe a larger truck and maybe even a turbo diesel like the three liter Duramax. But let me show you what happened here. This is a road trip. I did not do a video on my road trip, but going from Denver, Colorado towards Durango through the mountains, there was a big stretch where I averaged 31.9 MPG, which is insanely good. This is at high elevation, cruising at about 60 to 65 miles an hour. Of course, every day it's much worse. It's about 19.6 right now. And let me show you my MPG loop. Uh, where we did the Denver 100 test with Mr. Truck, and I was pleasantly surprised. <music> 113 miles of this Denver 100 loop, 21.7 MPG. If this is true, I would be very happy. All right, let's find out the truth. At the pump. So this is going to be probably four and a half gallons, I'm assuming. Oh, 5.12. Look at that. Let's five gallons. Let's, we'll calculate, um, let's calculate now. So the miles we went was 113, divide by what? Uh, 5.123. 5.123. Oh my goodness. Uh, what? <laughs> 22 oh points. My, that's good. That's good. Almost point 0.1. Now let's talk about off-roading. You could see a little bit of damage and scratching here on the bottom part of my bumper, this plastic component here, which is the step. This happened at our Onyx off-road course at Tumbleweed Ranch. Uh, I was going through Nathan's crack. So let me show you that video right now. Only some of the modified trucks that we've had here do not drag. Oh! That was about. I just lost it and then regained it almost instantly. That was interesting. How are we looking? Pretty good. I mean, you got a tiny bit of trail damage, but no dent. Just a little scuffed. Oh, that's just, um, you know, it's kind of a battle scar. Yeah, it's a souvenir. In general, I'm very happy with the off-road performance of this truck. It's just a departure angle here, as you see, uh, is not the best. Uh, I've taken other vehicles through that same course without damaging a bumper like this. So, I mean, it's a trail bus, so <laughs> it's supposed to be really great. The tires are amazing. Um, after 6,000 miles approximately, they still have plenty of tread. And these Territory MTs, I would recommend all the time, even in winter conditions. I've had these tires on other trucks. And even in winter cold weather, these tires are quite quite good now can you tell a difference visually of this truck so i made a change have you noticed have you noticed it already write in the comments below 
what do you think I've changed about, not the tonneau cover, not this, but I changed something visually on my truck. One of my points about buying this truck is to keep it affordable, which is why I bought a very basic but off-road ready truck with a, with a tow hitch and towing package. But this is what I like about this truck. Well, not that the tailgate drops, I don't like that. What I do love is that power locks and the tailgate locks with it. So that's a really great safety feature. Uh, tailgate theft is kind of big throughout the country. So the fact that I can lock my tailgate and also the tunnel cover kind of covers out of sight some of the things I have in the back there. That's also really, really good. But now we got to transition to more bad. So, so far I've showed you a lot of the good things about this truck. It's a road capability, it's towing ability, it's acceleration. Now the bad. Let me start the truck one more time. And here's some things. So I've had some software glitches. But the main software glitch, maybe even a hardware glitch, is this. My reverse camera does not work. Um, it's happened about a month and a half ago. I went to the dealership. They didn't have the parts, even though I told them about this. I said what my problem was. I went there two weeks after I made my appointment and still it's not fixed. So. That's not a great thing. Also, sometimes the way my Apple CarPlay integrates, sometimes it's a little bit slow to respond. Right now it's, it's super quick and nice. So, but once in a while I have some problems. Also my trailering app sometimes has issues where I, my MPG is not shown. Like right now it's showing my MPG, but there are other times that it kind of goes to zero. Of course, it's not doing that now. <laughs> the truck is really scared. <laughs> but so small software issues I've had. Of course, I also had the blackout screen. I had to reboot my truck by um, actually disconnecting the main battery, the 12 volt. So my screen now has, that, that only happened once and my screen now works perfectly. The other problem is I wanted to tune my truck, right? That was one of the reasons I was also excited about this truck because Chevrolet announced that from the dealership, from the factory, I can get 430 pound feet of torque after purchase. So I went to the dealer and it, I said, I'm requesting performance upgrade part this number. Their answer, parts have been ordered for the vehicle. What parts? I asked about this. They said, um, I think they need the software downloaded, which comes on a hard drive. So they ordered the part, but still I've been waiting several weeks and no answer. So I know some of you have had problems with this and I'm having a problem with this as well. Now in the back seat, I've complained about this before, not a ton of space. I have a couple of tie downs here, uh, part of my banks, uh, gauges and sensors. But other than that, there's not a ton of things I can put down here. Also, one of my complaints, well, actually, one good thing, rear vents. This has been really great on my road trips uh, for the rear passengers. So this is quite great. But even though I know I bought a more affordable truck, no rear pockets. So I need to, uh, I'm going to get, you know, kind of a seat cover with an additional pocket, but it didn't come with any pockets. Uh, I, I, I know it's kind of a more basic truck, but why can't I have simple things? All right, so that was some of the bad parts of this truck. Now the ugly. So this morning I went to uh, self-wash. I took a soap brush and I went over all the flares quite carefully. And I don't know what this is. This is Colorado mud and it just gets stuck on these black plastic parts everywhere. So I have to use special products like back to black or something like this to actually clean up. Oh, wow, somebody's doing donuts behind me. That's quite interesting. So this is just nitpicking. I also put an aftermarket mud flap. 
I know GM and Chevrolet offers their own mud flaps and I could go that route, but these were very cheap and I did it myself. I'm gonna also add it to my front so some of the mud doesn't quite spray all over the doors. And for my final ugly part, it's this. It's the sun visor. There is no extension here. So when the passenger sits here or when I'm sitting on that side, the space, the sun goes directly onto your face. So there is no way to move it. I know other versions of the Colorado have a movable sun visor, but that's a super simple thing. <laughs> Let me pay, I don't know, $50. Can you give me sun visors that actually extend and protect my face? So those are some of my gripes. Uh, finally, I wanna show you what I did visually. Have you figured it out already? Let's take a wider view. I did the floating roof. So I blacked out uh, using my help from my buddy Shane at Innovation Installations. This is basically a wrap. So I blacked out this area, I blacked out this area. So I kind of wanted this floating roof concept and it's quite subtle. A lot of people have no idea that I did something to the truck, but I think it changes the overall appearance of it. Uh, quite in an interesting way. Let me know what you think in the comments below. By the way, I paid about $41,000 for this truck. You're probably writing comments already. Andre, 41,000 is a lot of money. What the heck are you doing? Have you seen prices out there? <laughs> we recently did a story on TFL trucks, so check out oldtfl.com, where the brand new Ram TRX final edition starts at $119,000. You could buy three of these trucks for price of one Ram TRX. So yes, prices are going up, but I'm pretty happy with this truck. Yes, I wish I would have known about cruise control. I wish I would have ordered that option. I had no idea I had to. <laughs> I mean, didn't realize that. But other than that, I think I'll buy this again because it's fun to drive, it's quick. It's been a great towing vehicle for me and it's really competent off-road. That's all I wanted from this truck. So yes, with a couple of tweaks and hopefully my reverse camera gets fixed, I would do this again. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you next time.